Hello everyone, in this video we're going to begin sections 3.1 and 3.2 on vectors. Now vectors are a super important and useful object in mathematics and in graphing in particular. In this section we're going to begin looking at a definition of vectors. We're also going to learn about some basic operations and things that we can do with vectors. And we'll start to see how useful they are. All right, so first let's look together at the definition of a vector. So a vector is just, is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. So we should think of a, a vector as containing a magnitude, meaning like a size and a direction. So depending on what space we're in, 2D, 3D, we'll determine how many parameters we need to define that direction. We'll see some examples here soon. All right, so then graphically, vectors are represented by arrows. And we'll see why that makes sense, that arrows are representing magnitudes and directions. So maybe you can think of some examples of vectors in your own world or maybe in another class that you've taken. So vectors come up a lot in physics. So when we're thinking about force on an object, So maybe we have a little pulley and a rope and we have our object. So then there's a certain force being applied to this object in a direction of a certain magnitude of a certain amount. We also see vectors when we're talking about modeling in the weather, say, or the atmosphere, where we're talking about maybe the wind speed and the direction. So the magnitude, the magnitude or length of the vector could represent the speed of the wind and the direction where that arrow or vector is pointing to represents where the wind is pointing. All right. And so that's why it also makes sense that arrows are representative of magnitudes and directions because arrows, like in this graph here, point to a direction over two, up three, and are a certain length or magnitude. Okay, cool. So let's get started with this preliminary example A. So here we're told to consider the vectors given to the right. You may assume that successive dotted lines are separated by one unit, meaning that each of these boxes here are representing one unit. All right, so let's make some observations about what we see in this graph. So our first observation I want us to make is about how we would write out in notation or describe these vectors. So typically we label a vector. So looking at this vector P, we label it with its letter P and then do a little arrow on top to signify that P is a vector. And how do we represent this vector? Well, we represent it using its components. So looking at a two-dimensional graph like this, a direction tells us how far in the X and Y direction we go. So we see that P, where, where do we start? Where do we end? P starts here at the, at the origin, moves over one, two, three, four, five, to the left and down two. So how do we write that using vector notation? Well, what we do is we write negative five, I, little arrow, plus negative 2J, little arrow. Or in other words, we could have just written negative 5I minus 2J. Okay, so this might be new notation, I vector and J vector. So these are the unit vectors in the horizontal or vertical direction. So I is the little vector here, and J is the little vector here. So then using just these two vectors, we build them up to get to any other vector or describe any other vector we want. So here, little i is this vector here. So if we take five of those little i's in the negative direction, we get here, 
if we take two of those j's in the negative direction, we get here, and therefore we've built up our vector p. So again, this is called component notation. So this is how we write p in component notation. Let's spell notation right. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and do this for the other vectors. I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. All right, so let's take a look at Q. So we're going to start here and end here. So to write the component notation for Q, we're going to go to where we start, where the end of the arrow is, or maybe the beginning of the arrow, and we'll see how far do we move in each direction. Well, we're going to move over one, two, three to the right, and one, two, three down. So we'd have positive 3i minus 3j. So go ahead, pause the video, and compute the components for v. Then check your work. All right, so looking together, we start here and here. So we're going to move 1, 2 to the right, 1, 2, 3 up, which would mean that v is equal to 2 2i plus 3j. And now what about w? w, we start here and here. We move 2 to the right and 3 up. So w is equal to 2i plus 3j. Huh, isn't that the vector we just wrote for v? Yes, so it turns out V and W are the same vector, so we could say this is equal to W vector. Just because V and W start in different places, we can see that both their magnitude and directions are equal to each other. So their direction over 2, up 3, making their magnitudes or lengths also equal. So it doesn't matter where we start or end a vector. It just matters what its direction and magnitude are. All right, so now let's get into some operations and things that we can do with vectors. So one thing we can do with vectors is to multiply them by constants. So let's take, for example, we'll take 2 times the vector. So typically when we multiply by a constant, we refer to that constant as a scalar to differentiate it from a vector. A scalar is just a constant fixed number, while a vector, again, is a magnitude and a direction. So what happens when we do that? Well, to, to multiply 2 by the vector v, we multiply 2 by each component of v. So here's v. We're going to multiply by 2. So that has the following effect. So we multiply 2 into each component. So we get 4i plus 6j. So now let's see how that comes up graphically. So here we began with v. Now we're going to consider the vector that is 2 times v. So let's go ahead and plot that. So I'll just start over a little bit. So what that does is gives me the vector 4 to the right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here would be that vector 2v. So then my question for you is how is 2v different than v? Well, what you can see here visually, and if we think about it for a little bit, 2v is just v, so in the same direction as original v, but it's just twice as long. So multiplying by a scalar will just multiply the length of that vector by that scalar. So maybe I'll just write that a quick little summary. Multiply v by a makes a vector that is a times the length of v. All right, so we can also do something like, say, negate the vector or multiply by negative 1. 
So what happens in that case? So let's take a look at negative V. So to determine what negative V is, we just apply that negative into each component. So in this case, since each of the components of V is positive, taking the negative of V would give us negative 2i, negative 3j. So let's go ahead and graph that. Well, that vector would look like the following. So say we'll just start at the end of V. So we'd go down two, one, two, and to the left three, one, two, three. Oh, and I hope you caught me. I did that ordering wrong. We go negative two. So we have negative two in the to the left. And then we go down three, one, two, three. Because J is down or in the Y direction, vertical direction. So that vector we get, negative V looks like this. So how does negative V compare to V? Well, negative V is just kind of the reverse of V. So negative V is the same vector as V, but now just in the opposite direction of each component. Now you don't need to memorize what the effect is on the vectors, because the more that you do these, the more that'll become more intuitive for you and you'll just know it. You won't have to go back to memorizing something on your workbook. All right, now what I wanna talk about is the length of vectors. So the length of a vector, to use notation, is the following. We use two absolute value symbols around the vector. So this is called the length or magnitude. of the vector, it's also sometimes called the norm. So you might see that in other classes or in other textbooks. So how do we compute the length of P? Well, P we can see, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, as living inside of a triangle. And we'll draw on that triangle. So essentially we wanna find this distance here. Or if I wanna put it on this side, this distance here. And so we're just finding the distance then between these two points. So we can see P fitting in, or that length fitting into a right triangle. So we know that this length here is five, this length here is two. So then to find this length, the magnitude of P, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So recall that relationship is the following. We'd have five squared plus two squared equals that the length squared. So then to compute the length itself, we just square root everything. So what that amounts to doing is taking the square root of the squares of the components. And it doesn't matter that these components were negative because when we square them, those negatives come out. So this would be the square root of 29. So go ahead and practice computing the length or magnitude of Q. And then after you've had a chance to do that, continue the video and compare your answers. All right, so let's look at it together. So because the components of Q are three and three, the length or magnitude of Q would be the square root of three squared plus negative three squared which would be the square root of 18. Awesome. In the next part of this example, we're gonna look at how we add two vectors and what that means graphically. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.